Hello you lovelies, today I'm going to make a wonderful, tasty and super crunchy pavlova with you. It's something you've been requesting for quite a while from me and it's super super simple so we're going to get started right away and today I'm going to make a fig and honey pavlova because I really like that and I've got some figs left over so I think that's going to go really really well, let's, let's see. Let's start by doing our eggs. There's a couple of things that you need to know about making a really, really good pavlova. One is obviously separating your egg whites, and I use large eggs. Now, if you have the time, it really does make a little bit of a difference. If you can separate your eggs the evening before, pop them in the fridge and use them the next morning. It makes the eggs old, and therefore actually makes them stiffer when you are whisking them. You don't have to do it, it's not a necessity, it won't ruin your pavlova if you don't, but it's a really great trick. Another one that's really, really important is to make sure your mixing bowl is spotless. And by spotless, I mean not just cleaning it as you usually would. Take the whole thing apart, clean it properly with soap, dry it properly, and then take a little bit of vinegar onto a tea towel or like a kitchen towel, whatever you have, and just wipe the entire bowl. That will ensure that there's no fat residue on your mixing bowl and you can actually whisk your egg whites properly. So I'm gonna pop them in, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar helps get a much better consistency. It creates a smoother, more creamy egg white mixture that doesn't actually deflate so quickly. I make my pavlova with a classic, it's called a French meringue, which is a very classic meringue, really easy, there's no heat or sugar syrup involved, but if you want to take it to the next level, check out my Italian meringue recipe in the link in the description below. That one uses sugar syrup, which makes it really, really stiff and makes a pavlova that's absolutely to die for. But we'll go basic today, start that whole process off, and I'm going to add 37 degrees of heat. The heat helps emulsify the egg whites, make it more creamy and also a bit more stiff and then we'll go to the next stage of adding the sugar. After about three minutes it looks a bit like this. So you essentially have really creamy happy egg whites and that's what you want. Now we're going to go on for a little while longer with temperature and we're going to add in our caster sugar very very slowly. This is a critical stage so at this point you really want to be very slow and I'm going to show you how you do that. Essentially just turn it back on and then we're going to take our caster sugar teaspoon by teaspoon through the lid okay so that this is becoming a really nice homogeneous mass and it doesn't collapse very quickly because if you add lots of caster sugar very quickly it'll collapse and you probably won't be able to save it. So let's do this very nice and slowly so we become a proper pad. It's been about five minutes now and I've added in the sugar very slowly. You can see it's totally gone glossy, caramelized properly. That's what we want. It warms it up really well. And this is almost finished now. At this stage, we're only going to add a bit of corn flour because we want to make sure this actually lasts when it's baked so it gets really nice and stiff. And a tiny bit of vinegar. And we're doing that now with that temperature just to quickly whiz it through and then our pavlova is completely done and we can pop it onto a tray. I'm going to just pop this on a tray now. The way I tend to do it, this is looking so gorgeous by the way. It looks so delicious. I really want to lick it right now, but I can't. And that's really, really sad. Whereas with Italian meringue, you could really lick it if you are pregnant, so it doesn't really matter. But this one, we will just eat it afterwards. All I've done is just pop down a little bit of this meringue mixture underneath my baking paper so that the baking paper doesn't move while I'm baking. Now I'm going to remove the butterfly just gently push out it's so marshmallowy. It's so yummy actually, it's amazing. You could of course add food colouring at the last stage where you're adding in the corn flour. You could also at that stage add in cocoa powder if you want to make a chocolate meringue and a chocolate pavlova. You could also add in some espresso powder if you want to make an espresso martini pavlova. There's like endless possibilities. I just want to show you the base recipe so you can adapt it however you guys like it. And then we can go from there. Now, all you do is you 
spoon it on right into the center nicely and then I'm going to use my cake palette knife I mean this totally depends what you want to do with your pavlova you can make cool shapes you can just leave it as it is I tend to use my palette knife and sort of make a bit of a tower of pavlova goodness and it looks a bit like this you just gently push individual bits up and make a really cute pattern like that and mind you it will sort of go to a little bit wider as it's baking but this looks pretty nice to me quite like the neatness of it but also the messiness of it and these little stiff bits are really cute so then once that's done you just pop it straight in the oven I'm going to go on 100 degrees it's actually not that high the temperature because you don't want the pavlova to get brown and we're going to go for one and a half hours in there we don't want our pavlova to be completely cooked we don't want it to dry out we want this nice little gooey middle that's really nice and fluffy but that lovely outer texture that's really lovely and crispy without getting anything brown so 100 degrees is what you need to go for and you're going to go for one and a half hours for this particular one if you make small ones you're obviously going to be done much faster and then we're going to leave it in the oven to cool down while the oven cools down otherwise your meringue will deflate and that's not going to look nice so let's pop it in and then we'll check it out later our pavlova has finished and it's out of the oven I've cooled it down I've already popped a bit of Greek yogurt on top this is what it looks like it's absolutely proper this is what a pavlova should look like and I've just popped a little bit of Greek yogurt on top what I'm gonna do now is just decorate it a bit with figs just you know be free to do whatever you like to do you can totally do anything and we're gonna finish off our pav in style with a little bit of a drizzle of honey I mean look at that this is so gorgeous isn't it this is exactly what I wanted it to look like I really want to just eat it but we will drizzle it first just a gentle drizzle everywhere a little bit it's just gonna look so nice look at that hungry anyone so that is a pavlova done and you know me I normally tuck right in but today this is too pretty to tuck right in so I'm going to be sharing this with people and so you can just enjoy the look of that once more and if you want to see what that tastes like and what it looks like inside I suggest you make it very very quickly at home and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more amazing videos ring that little bell and I'll see you guys next time